Most of us come across financial statements during the course of our work. We keep hearing that such and such company has made huge profits, another company, its financial condition has deteriorated. People talk so glibly about performance of companies, their health, what they will do in future and all that. Much of it is based on an assessment of the financial statements. Do you read financial statements? Are you accountants by any chance, any of you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't you really think that financial statements are useful to me in your work? See, I am more worried about the production in my small business department as a manager in charge. Though, um, I am more concerned about the production and marketing of my outputs. Sometimes I look at the financial statements, but they are so full of confusing terms that ultimately I leave them to the accountant. I am an income tax officer and I have to look at financial statements all the time and I do wish they were simpler. In fact, they are so complicated that uh, sometimes I think it's intentional. <laughs> no, it's not intentional and uh, people do find financial statements difficult to understand. But don't you think that if we understood financial statements, we do our jobs more efficiently? And let me tell you, it is not at all difficult to understand financial statements. After all, financial statements merely portray what is happening in reality, nothing more than that. I am sure that understanding financial statement is of great importance to anybody who is managing resources, which is what we all do. As a bank manager, I would like to understand financial statements properly. The whole way, I am dealing with clients who have to be assessed based on their financial statements. I am sure our friend who is managing a factory, if he had a better understanding and in that, in that understanding of financial statements, he would be much more effective. Yes, I, I do agree with that. Uh, and in that understanding of financial statements uh, would be certainly useful to you as a manager. And it would require sustained efforts. However, today let us try to develop a basic understanding. And basic understanding is not that difficult to develop. Uh, if I may point out to you, there are three basic financial statements. The balance sheet, the profit and loss account, and the fund flow statement. Uh, here's a copy of the balance sheet. Would you like to have a look at it? It seems that this statement is for the entire year which ended on uh, 31st March 1986? Not quite. It is not for the entire year. Uh -huh. uh, it is in fact more like a snapshot view uh -huh. about the resources of this company as at 31st March 1986. I see. The only means uh -huh. that this shows the resource position of this company as at the end of the day on 31st March 1986, uh -huh. say 8 p.m. Oh. One more transaction on the first, mm. uh, that will be the first April, and this statement will totally change. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you, I might point out that this balance sheet is only a snapshot view as at a particular point of time. If this statement is during a statement of resources at a given point of time, why do people call it balance sheet? Why not something else which is more indicative of its true nature? I think you are right. That may be true of uh, most of the jargon which the accountants use. But I want to point out to you that the term value sheet has stood the best of time in the sense that it has been used for hundreds of years now and people understand it that way. Secondly, even the law recognizes it as value sheet. Uh, of course, if one were to rename the statement or if one were to re-question it, uh, I think a better, more appropriate name would be statement of resources. Mm -hmm. But I have always considered a balance sheet as primarily an accounting document providing certain accounting figures only. How can I provide a picture about the kinds of resources like men, machines, materials, land, etc.? Don't you think that accounting is really a system which talks of resources? Well, resources are physical in nature, men, machines, materials. But 
This is precisely what accounting does. It keeps a track of the various kinds of resources, from where they have come, what is the net result of their usage, how well they are being used, where they are, and so on and so forth. Now you are managing physical resources. I ask you to prepare a total position about the physical resources of your unit, say the factory which you are managing. All you can, you can do is to give me a statement saying so many machines, so many acres of land, this number of people, so many tons of raw materials. Okay, I have the list. Firstly, I can't add it up. Secondly, I can't compare it with a past on the list of another unit because they may have an entirely different mix of resources. Now, what the counting does is that it converts these resources into a common denominator known as money. That is our measuring rod. Money is our measuring rod. So, merely what the counting is, counting is merely a language. It is a way of communicating the facts, the position about resources by converting them into money. And the accountant keeps a track of the resources uh, by translating into money. Money converts everything heterogeneous uh -huh. into a homogeneous factor which can be added or subtracted. Let me ask a question. Now, if money is the measuring rod of uh, business. Then what does one do about the finer resources of business? Let me, uh, let, well, let me say something like efficiency, uh, competence, morale of the employees. Of the employees? Yes. Oh, you are right. The, the company cannot measure the morale of the employees. He cannot measure the expertise. Mm -hmm. He cannot measure the competence. I mean, there is no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Directly, he can't. I can't give you a statement that the total money value of the morale, efficiency and competence of the employees of your factory is X sum. I cannot do that. But don't you think that indirectly, when I measure the performance, mm -hmm. when I measure your output and input, after all the competence, expertise, it results in what? It results in performance. So, indirectly that measurement comes But you see, don't you think money as a measuring rod somewhat irrational? Doesn't money itself keep on thinking in value? I am sure if an architect had, a, had such a measuring rod for building houses, the size of it changes overnight. We shall have very funny houses indeed. Oh yes, it will be difficult to live in a house like that. But uh, you must recognize that this is a limitation of accounting. Uh, yes, the accountant has to measure with money and money keeps on changing in value. I might point out that some accountants have tried to deal with this problem by developing alternative techniques, supplementary information on the basis of what is the impact of changing value of money on uh, financial transactions. Uh, this technique, however, has not yet been accepted legally, uh, in our country at least. But you must not forget that still, despite this limitation, money is the best measure of God. Firstly, we are all aware of money, I mean, we all know what money is, I hope. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, money is a thing which can convert almost any physical resource into a common denominator. You are talking about balance sheet being a statement of resources. Can you please elucidate on that? Yes, balance sheet is a statement of resources. If we look at the balance sheet here, uh, it does give us a position about the statement of resources, especially in the second part where it says application of funds. Uh, let us think of what are the resources. Now suppose you want to set up the Vanaspati factory. Firstly, you will need the infrastructure, you will need the plant, uh, of course, land, buildings, factory sheds, plant, etc. That is the infrastructure. In short, you need funds, investment in certain assets which enable you to operate, to produce, to have your basic capacity. The accountants call all the assets which provide you the basic capacity, the infrastructure, as fixed assets. Let us look at this balance sheet. What is the amount of resources invested in infrastructure here? Rupees 23 crores? Where is the 23 crores? You see, the accountant calls such assets as fixed assets because they are fixed in nature, like land and buildings. No, no that's not correct. Uh, the term fixed assets does not imply that something which is immovable or embedded in earth is fixed. Fixed to that, it doesn't mean that. Fixed assets are those valuable resources which provide the infrastructure. Thus, even a motor car can be a fixed asset, though it's not embedded in earth, at least most of the motor cars. Uh, they are those assets which are tangible, 
which have been purchased for use, for producing, for operating, and therefore they have long life assets. The business has acquired them ordinarily in order to use them in production of other goods and services. Now these fixed assets, we value them at cost. Uh, in our value sheet, uh, you find two, two terms here, the gross block and the net block. Are you with me? Yes. The gross block shows the original or actual cost of the fixed assets. In other words, suppose you are steel mill, in 1977 you invest rupees 50 crores in purchasing plant and machinery. In 1983 you invest another 55 crores. In 1987 you invest another 35 crores. The gross block will be rupees 150 crores. That is the concept of gross block. Gross block in our case is something like uh, 23.39 crores. That is the figure yeah. which you said was the fixed asset. That is what, that is the figure of fixed asset which this company paid originally over the years, whatever it acquired, that is the figure. So, uh, would you think that uh, 239.44 lakhs uh, is the original cost of the fixed asset and uh, would be 695.30 is the written down cost? Uh, no, the figure of 695.3 lakhs is the figure of depreciation. The written down cost is 1644.14 lakhs and not... Let me explain, let me explain, you know. Please explain to me as a banker board. Okay. <laughs> uh, now the original cost is 23.39 lakhs. But as these assets are used, we would be depreciating them. In the sense, we, every year there will be a diminish, diminution in the value of assets because they are being used. Now, the accountant charges off depreciation in token of the diminution in the value of assets. I see. And this 695.30 crores shows the diminution in the value of assets or what we are charged off as depreciation. And the net value is 16.44 lakhs. That is the net block. I see. From the balance sheet, you can find both the original as well as the net block. Do you make this distinction so as to make the return of the balance sheet aware of the cost of resources for infrastructure actually in use and the cost of resources which have not yet been put to the actual operations? No, the figure of gross block and net block does not show it. Look at the balance sheet again. There is another figure show called capital works in progress. This is the amount of cost incurred of such fixed assets which have been installed, which have not yet started operating. Thus, factories under construction, buildings under construction, they would all be shown under this head. One question. Would you say that the cars manufactured by Maruti Limited and held for sale are under the fixed effect of the company? No. I think uh, the cars will not be shown under the fixed assets because they are not being used for production of goods and services. They are manufactured items being held for sale. I think you have now understood the concept of fixed assets. The other kind of resources used in a business are those which arise during the normal operating cycle of the business. Now go to this of your factory. You have got the land, the buildings, the factory sheds and machines. But the factory cannot run even now. Isn't it? You will need, now for example, you will need some cash always. You will always have to keep some cash in hand. But a part of that cash will be invested in raw materials. You will always have to keep some raw materials in hand because it takes time for you to buy raw materials and you will always have to stop it. Then as you add on the raw materials, you start working on the raw materials in the factory. You add the labor input, you add the services, overheads. You get what is known as working process. Working process is created this way. It is neither raw materials nor finished goods. It is something which is still in process in the factory, being manufactured. Then working process gets converted into finished goods. Once the goods are ready, they are ready for dispatch to be displayed in your display rooms, go downs, ready for sale. You always have finished goods in hand. Because it is never it never happens that you sell all the finished goods. It's a cycle, you know, it's a, it's a constant chain which is going on. Now when the credit goods are sold, some people pay you in cash, but most people buy it on credit. Mm -hmm. So you create what is known as debtors. 
people who owe money, who will pay you money at a point, a later point of time. And once the debtor is paid in the cash, the cycle is complete. This is the operating cycle of the business and it can be shown in the plan of a diagram. In the sense that at all points of time, you need investment of funds in these assets, cash, raw materials, working process, finished goods, debtors, etc. Right. Here are entries, debtors, cash and bank balances. But where are the working process and raw materials? Probably one of the schedule which shows the detailed breakup of the entries, I think. And uh, what, what did you say? Did you say that loans and advances are also current assets? You are right that as far as the schedule is concerned, the raw material and the working process it, it would be shown under inventories. It's a detailed breakup of inventories. As regards loans and advances, in the normal course of business, loans and advances are current assets. For example, you give a loan to one of your employees to buy a car or build a house or things like that. Now surely it's a part of your operating cycle. However, if you have given a long term loan or advance uh, to a sister company or something, that will not be a current asset. You said one has to commit resources of inventories, but doesn't one get goods on credit from suppliers? I can surely buy the materials on credit. How about that? I thought uh, banker would ask a question like that. Surely, uh, one enjoys credit, one buys goods on credit, and you have sundry creditors. You also get credit from the telephone department, the electricity supply company, and even the workforce. I make a telephone call today, but I will see them three months later. My worker is worth the whole month, and then they are paid on the first of the month or something of that sort. So, in effect, you are receiving a credit uh, from the uh, for that period of time. Yeah. In other words, uh, apart from these current assets, which are a part of my operating cycle, I also receive credits from suppliers, from utility companies, from my workers. Uh, these are known as current liabilities and provisions. Would you like to have a look here? Current liabilities and provisions. Have you been able to look yeah. in the balance sheet? Current liabilities yeah. and provisions? Yes. Yeah. Now you see there is a little distinction between current liabilities and provisions. Mm -hmm. They are very exactly how much I have to pay, it is a current liability. Mm -hmm. But like you know, for the first March 86, I may not have received the bill from the telephone company. So I make an estimate. And when I make an estimate, it becomes a, a provision. From what you say, then it becomes clear that the funds committed uh, by, say, uh, by the business family, in my business for day to day activities, can be sort of found by uh, deducting current liabilities from current assets? Yeah, right. That's right. Sure. Uh, actually, if you deduct from current assets current liabilities, mm -hmm. uh, you get what they want to call as net current assets, net current assets, or working capital. Mm -hmm. Actually, working capital is the term which is used uh, more often. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, if you see here, the working capital is 218, 1.88 lakhs. Mm -hmm. uh, and you will find from the third balance sheet, you will find that fixed assets or uh, monies invested in the infrastructure are there. Mm -hmm. And then the money is invested in day-to-day -day operations mm -hmm. are there. But you see, we have another figure shown, in, shown as investments in the balance sheet. Yes, you are right. That. You are right. There is a figure shown under investments, 82,000 small yeah. figure here. Uh, you would appreciate that fixed assets and current assets, or net current assets, uh, to be sort of more precise, mm -hmm. represent the commitment of funds in the operations of an entity. Mm -hmm. One in infrastructure, one in day to day operations. However, in many companies, funds are also invested outside businesses. Yeah. You know, you may have spare funds for a little while. Now, you won't keep them in your bank uh, earning nothing, so you invest them outside. Sometimes you invest funds for controlling the other companies, like you are a Vanaspati manufacturer. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you need tools to pack the Vanaspati. And there was a time when things were not available. So one, one response could be that you buy shares of that company so that you have one person there in the board of directors and you can assure at least a constant supply of uh, things to you. All these items are shown in the investments. Thus, you would appreciate that fixed assets, infrastructure, working capital, day-to-day -day operations, and outside investments are the three main applications of funds in a business. Mm -hmm. The first one is commitment of funds in business, in, in the infrastructure, the second in the day-to-day -day operations, mm -hmm. and third in outside business. Mm -hmm. This, in a way, uh, completes this. That's it. 
what it is uh, actually this gives us a fair understanding about how the balance it gives us a picture about the application of funds but i find there are other items also in the balance sheet yes you are right actually if you would see this balance sheet carefully there are two sides the first one which we have already discussed is the application of funds yes. which have these three main items like 1 2 3 isn't it there uh, this is so we have given the overview of how the funds have been used I and mean, whatever the funds the business had, how they have been used, for surely the, uh, there must be some source of those funds. I mean, the funds must have come from somewhere. The other side shows you how the funds have been raised. Let us look at the other side. Uh, I might mention that uh, some that some companies call the other side as capital and liability side. Uh, capital and liability side, though here we have used the term sources of funds. The main source of funds is always bank loans. Yes, that's right. That's right. The banker always thinks that the main source of funds is the banker's loans. We may be true in many cases, though. No, not always. Not always. Well, actually, if you all the economic units receive funds from two sources. Uh, if you see here also the, the two sources. Uh, firstly, the owners, and secondly, the outsiders. I mean, it's simple. Uh, that foreign funds and loan funds are the two main sources of funds. There is a third source of funds, isn't it? I've seen companies flying back profits, which they might have earned. They earned profits which are flowed back into the company and not distributed. Also constitute an important source of funds. Actually, in the case of all large companies, I should say all good companies, uh, if you earn one crore of rupees as profits. You might distribute only about twenty lakhs as dividends, and the rest is ploughed back. But you must appreciate that profits which are ploughed back are also the funds belonging to the owners. They belong to the shareholders. Uh, if the entire profits have not been distributed, of course, the entire profits cannot be distributed. In the case of companies, there are rules which say that some of the profits can be distributed and not the rest. But if the entire profits are not distributed, And they plow back. The dividends that belong to the shareholders. Now, if you look at this balance sheet, you have two items under shareholders' funds. First is capital. Now, this is the amount of funds which the shareholders have subscribed. Yeah. Now, you must have seen every day in the newspapers advertisements uh, about companies asking you to subscribe for shares. Now, when you buy these shares, these amounts are shown here. The second amount, that is the reserves and debts, is the amount which represents profits earned but not distributed. Profits which are sort of retained in the company. Of course, I have pointed out that one can convert reserves and surplus into share capital. When you do that, you it, it, it is said that you are issuing bonus shares. Well, I heard somebody say that bonus shares are bogus shares. Bogus shares, this is. <laughs> they are not so bogus. <laughs> there is an advantage to the investor. There is an advantage to the shareholder in the sense that when we issue bonus shares, he can sell a part of his holding in the market. But of course, in a way, it does not change his total stake in the company because what has happened is his funds. Belonging to him, shown in the reserves and surplus, have got converted into capital. Only he has been issued the share scripts, and when he is issued the share scripts, uh, he can sell it in the market. But it does not change the position. Bank loans also shown in the loans. Yes, yes. Bank loans are shown in the loans. Actually, all types of loans from various sources are shown in the loans. Loans, as you know, can be taken from various sources. Firstly, you can go to the public asking them to loan you funds. These are known as convertible debentures. Yes, I hold debentures of a company. Convertible debentures of a company. Does this mean I have loaned money to this company? Yes, uh, you have loaned money to this company with a small difference. That till these debentures are converted, you have loaned money to the company. Once the debentures are converted, it will be. An equity share capital. Uh, in other words, this is a very interesting kind of loan, in which partly it is loan, partly it is equity share capital. What are the other types of loans 
Would it be including loans from government, financial institutions, banks, etc.? You are very right. Uh, there are various kinds of loans, loans from the government, financial institutions. We have talked about public loans already. Uh, and many other kinds of loans. All these are from the secured loans. I might also mention that there is another category which is called unsecured loans. In our balance sheet it does not appear. But if you have taken loans against which you have not given any security, it will be classified as unsecured loans. Let us see, it is quite interesting to note that the total of the two sources of funds and applications of funds, they are same. Is it by coincidence or is it some accounting trick? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not a trick. It is not even a coincidence. Uh, the whole accounting system is such that at all points of time, the total of sources of funds and the totals of applications of funds are equal. After all, if the funds have been invested in fixed assets, working capital and investments, they must have come from somewhere. So if we total the sources of funds and the applications of funds, the figures would be the same. What about profits that we are making? What about losses? And how can we total study if we have profits or losses? No, well, profits and losses are on behalf of the shareholders of the owners, of the owners. Thus, if you make profits, the amount is shown under reserves and surplus. I see. If you have been incurred losses, reserves and surplus would be a negative figure. However, in accounting, we do not show any figure as a negative figure. Oh, yeah. Therefore, if you have incurred losses and your cumulative losses are there, as on a particular point of time, it would be shown as the fourth item under application of funds as the debit balance of profit and loss account. But you must appreciate that under all situations, the balance sheet will tell you. The two sides of the balance sheet are yeah. there. This is very interesting. I always thought an accountant had a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> no. Uh, if we look carefully at the balance sheet and if we understand it, uh, we will find that there is no trick involved. It is merely a snapshot of a particular situation at a given point of time. Uh, but if we look at it carefully, we can get a very clear idea about the financial health and some other indicators about the company. You mentioned that balance sheet is a snapshot. Does it mean that if we were looking at the balance sheet as at the end of 31st March 1986, the balance sheet at 10.30 a.m. on 1st April 1986 will be different? Well, that can never happen because uh, nobody turns up for work at 10.30. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about that, but uh, certainly it will be if there is a transaction by 10.30. And I'm sure somebody would turn up by that That's optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me explain it to you a little further. Let us look at this balance sheet once again. Suppose at 10.30, if you will permit me, okay. uh, on 1st April 1986, we pay out 5 lakhs of sundry debtors. Mm -hmm. What will happen? These sundry debtors, they get reduced by 5 lakhs. Mm -hmm. So will the cash be, because we have paid that out. Take another example. Suppose you have bought a fixed asset and the consumers are on credit, then the amount shown under the title gross block under fixed assets will increase by one crore and some retail under current liabilities will increase by one crore. So at all times of time, the totals of the two sides will be the same. Also, the balance sheet as at the end of 1st April 1986 will show the the results, that is the profit or loss made during that period. That will be shown in the results figure of the balance sheet uh, on, as on 1st April 1987. That means that we have to measure profit or loss for a period separately. Exactly. One of the major tasks in accounting is to measure profit and loss and thereby performance of an enterprise during the period. In the next part of this discussion, we shall discuss how profit and loss is measured. We should also discuss another financial statement, that is the fund flow statement. So that should be interesting. I hope so. Thank you.